So uh, let's continue our lesson. Um, excuse me, I have forgotten to make a recording. Now it's a recording our lesson. So let's continue. Okay, the next one, this is the International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, so here uh, you can observe the symbols of some English sound symbols and also other language sound symbols, with, uh, which is pronounced with the help of bilabial, labial, dental, alveolar, and so on, and so other um, organs that helps us to produce the sounds. Okay, after the end of the lesson, I will send this presentation to you. You can get acquainted with it in a more detail. Okay, the next one. English consonants. In articulatory phonetics, a consonant is a speech sound that is articulated with complete or partial closure of the vocal tract. Example, uh, P, pronounced with the lips, T, pronounced with the front of the tongue, T, K, pronounced with, or I'm sorry, K, pronounced with the back of the tongue, H, pronounced with the throat, F, and S, pronounced by forcing air through a narrow channel, which is called, which we can call fricatives, and M and M and N, which have air flowing through the nose, or we can call it as a nasals. All contrasting with the consonants are vowels. Producing a consonant involves making the vocal tract narrower at some locations than it is usually is. We call this narrowing a constriction. Which consonant you are pronouncing depends on where in the vocal tract the construction is and how narrow it is. It also depends on a few other things, such as whether the vocal folds are vibrating and whether air is flowing through the nose. Okay, let's get down to the classification of the consonants. We classify consonants along three major dimensions. Place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing. What is the place of articulation? The place of articulation, or POA, it's a converted uh, form of the of these um, words, word combinations of a consonant, specifies where in the vocal tract the narrowing occurs. From front to back, the POA POAs that English uses are the next one, bilabials. Okay, bilabial from the front to back sounds. Okay, in a bilabial consonants, the low, lower and upper lips approach or touch each other. So you can observe it uh, in a given picture. English sounds like p, b, and m are bilabial stops. So you can easily observe by pronouncing this, uh, this sounds that your air that comes through your throat uh, will stop immediately. P, B, and M. Okay. The next one, labiodental. In a labiodental consonant, the lower lip approaches or touches the upper teeth. English F and V are bilabial fricatives. At home, um, if you have a time, try to practice these sounds and you will notice that uh, your lower lip will touch your upper teeth. Okay, the next types of the sounds are dental. In a dental consonant, the tip or blade of the tongue approaches or touches the upper teeth. So you can easily observe it in a given picture. Here, our uh, tip of the tongue touches upper teeth. Okay. For example, English th, th, English th, th are dental fricatives. So there are actually a couple of different ways of forming these sounds. 
the tongue tip can approach the back of the upper teeth, but not press against them so hard that the airflow is completely blocked. The blade of the tongue, the next way, the blade of the tongue can touch the both, I'm sorry, the bottom of the upper teeth with the tongue tip protruding between the teeth, still leaving enough space for turbulent air stream to escape. This kind of th and the is often called interdental. <laughs> the diagram to the right shows a typical interdental th, th or the. So you can easily observe it here. Okay, the next organs that helps us to produce consonants are alveol, is alveol, I'm sorry. In an alveolar consonant, the tongue tip or less often the tongue blade approaches or touches the alveolar ridge. The ridge immediately, immediately behind the upper teeth. And the next organs that helps con uh, to produce consonants are post alveolars. Uh, in a post alveolars consonant, the constriction is made immediately behind the alveolar ridge. Now here, you can easily observe the difference between alveolar and post alveolar ones. So this is the alveolar one, and this there are we there we can observe the post alveolar consonants. The constriction can be made with the either the tip or the blade of the tongue, the English fricatives, and the, the are made at this POA. So could you please remind what is POA? I would like to it's know. Uh, place, of place of articulation. Uh, place of articulation, yes. As a, oh, I'm sorry, the picture already covered the line of. Okay, the next one, retroflex. In a retroflex consonant, the tongue tip is curled backward in the mouth. English, so r is a retroflex. Approximate, the tongue tip is curled up towards the post alveolar region the area immediately behind the alveolar ridge. Ruh, ruh. So, dear master students, uh, if you are interested in producing, pronouncing, I'm sorry, the sounds, you can easily um, practice it at home in front of the mirror or observing how your uh, mouth organs moves, acts, or helps you to produce consonants. Okay, the next, palatal, uh, in a palatal consonant, um, the body of the tongue approaches or touches the hard palate, English ya, ya is a palatal approximant, the tongue body approaches the hard palate, but closely enough to create turbulence in an airstream. The next one is velar organ, uh, so just give me a minute. Okay, velar. Uh, in a velar consonant, the body of the tongue approaches or touches the soft palate. Or villum. English, k, g, n, or stops made at this POA. Okay, the next one, the glottis, is the opening between the vocal folds in an h. This opening is narrow enough to create some turbulence in the airstream flowing past the vocal folds. For this reason, H is often classified as a glottal fricative. Okay, dear students, um, according to the principle of English consonants, uh, we can, we did classify uh, 
consonants uh, into three parts, labial, lingual, and glottal ones. And the class of labial consonants is subdivided into bilabial, labial dental, and among the class of lingual consonants, three subclasses are distinguished. They are forelingual, mediolingual, and backlingual. So the next thing, what is the manner of articulation? Speech sounds also vary in the way the airstream is affected. As it flow, form the lungs up and out of the mouth and nose. So you know that it may be blocked or particularly blocked. The vocal cords may be vibrate or not vibrate. It refers to this as the manner of articulation. The process by which the moving column of air is shaped called the manner of articulation. So stops, what is stops? A stop consonant completely cuts off the airflow through the mouth. In the consonants, t, d, and n, the tongue tip touches the alveolar ridge and cuts off the airflow at the point. In t and d, this means that there is no airflow at all for the duration of the stop. In n, there is no airflow through the mouth, but there is still airflow through the nose. N. Okay, mm, stops can be divided as following. Nasal stops like n, which involve airflow through the nose and oral stops like t and d, which do not. Nasal stops are often simply called nasals. Oral stops are often called plosives. Oral stops can be either voiced or voiceless. Nasal stops are almost always voiced. It is physically possible to produce a voiceless nasal stop. But English, like most language, does not use such sounds. So what's fricatives? In a fricative consonant, the articulators involved in the constriction approach get close enough to each other to create a turbulent airstream. The fricatives of the English are f, v, th, th, s, z, sh, and z. So the next thing that we are going to talk about is ap approximants. In an approximant, the articulators involved in the constriction are further apart still than they are. For fricative, the articulators are still closer to each other than when the vocal tract is in its neutral position, but they are not even close enough to cause the air passing between them to become turbulent. Approximants of English are U, Y, R, and L. So, affricate. An affricate is a single sound composed of a stop portion and a fricative portion. In English, the airflow is first interrupted by a stop, which is very similar to t. So, made a bit further back. But instead of finishing the articulation quickly and moving directly into the next sound, the tongue pulls away from the stop slowly so that there is a period of time immediately after that stop where the constriction is narrow enough to cause a turbulent airstream. In ch, the period of turbulent airstream following the stop portion is the same as a fricative sh. English j is an affricate like ch but voiced Let, uh, laterals sounds which involve airflow around the side of the tongue are called laterals. Sounds which are not lateral are called central. It is um, the only lateral in English, la, la. The other sounds of English, like most of the sounds of the world's language are central. 
more specifically, L is a lateral approximant. The so opening left at the side of the tongue is wide enough that the air flowing through does not become turbulent. So the next thing, what is voicing? The vocal folds may be held against uh, I'm sorry, against each other, adjust the right tension so that the air flowing past them from the lungs will cause them to vibrate against each other. We call this process voicing. Sounds which are made with vocal fold vibration are said to be voiced. Sounds made without vocal fold vibration are said to be voiceless. So description of articulation consonants, okay, plosives, fricatives, semiconsonants. Plosives, the flow of air is blocked and suddenly released, a bit like an explosion. So, for example, p labial is pro uh, produced by closing the lips and releasing them. Fricatives, the flow of air is restricted to make a hissy sound, a bit like friction. Semiconsonants are produced by keeping the vocal tract briefly in a wall like position and then changing it rapidly to the position required for the following wall. Laterals la is the only English lateral and is produced by putting the tip of the tongue against the gums and letting the air pass on either side of the tongue memorable because lateral sites. Nasal consonants are made with a soft palate down air passing through the nose. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention and for wasting your time. If you are bored, uh, I would like you to cheer up with asking some questions according to my uh lecture materials so i would like you to know i would like to know how did you accept my lecture how and how much attention did you pay for i think it was great thank you very much it was uh very informative and uh, so can, uh, can you we... tell me what is the uh, lateral sound? Lateral sound? Uh, from the lecture, L. yes. yes. It's, uh... okay. So there is only one sound in English language. Sound L? L. 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 Yeah. L. L. Mm -hmm. Dear students, um, at the beginning of my lecture, I was a little bit confused. Instead of pronouncing sounds, I pronounced letters. So be careful with pronouncing sounds because sounds are not letters. Letters can be pronounced A, B, C, D, but sounds we pronounce it in a different way. For example, so letter C is pronounced as S or K sometimes, yes? And you know about it. For example, letter B, we pronounce it as a B. We don't say big, we say big. Okay. Please pay attention um, for your pronunciation because you know, um, there is English language uh, is very rich to pronunciation differences. Okay, um, if you don't have any question to me, 